But in America, it's been virtually ignored. I think there was a big lobby probably for other artificial sweeteners. I don't know, maybe dentists just weren't interested or didn't understand. And uh, this is why I've spent so much time educating the public as far as I can about this incredible sugar. Today I want to talk about xylitol and explain that it's way more than just something for your teeth. It's really a health sugar. And although people who know me know that I have been about xylitol for over 20 years with my own company, I started that company mainly so I could share xylitol that wasn't available in the United States with my patients, my family, my friends, employees, and all of those guys have enjoyed xylitol now for over 20 years. I think what many people just do not know are the amazing effects of xylitol that go far beyond oral health. They're actually really good for general health and well-being. You see, xylitol was first discovered a long time ago. It's naturally found in plants like corn husks and also in fruits like raspberries and strawberries. It's mainly known because it is found in the wood of trees, birch trees and beech trees in particular. It also is in our human body. We have it in the tissues of our body, so our body, when we eat and consume xylitol, actually knows what to do with it. It was used over 150 years ago as a baking sugar, as a sugar for diabetics. And there's a book actually on Amazon written over 20 years ago, Sweeten Your Life the Xylitol Way. And this is just to show you that people have baked with xylitol. It's been known in China and Japan for decades. In countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, they understood in the about 60 years ago how to use xylitol with preschool children. And when they handed out in preschool, they found over 60 years of experience that these children don't get cavities. It's that simple. They also use it to improve the health of pregnant mothers. And they found that then the mothers don't spread the bacteria to their children. So it's been a public health measure in Finland and other countries. The University of Turku in Finland was very central in a lot of these studies. But in America, it's been virtually ignored. I think there was a big lobby probably for other artificial sweeteners. I don't know, maybe dentists just weren't interested or didn't understand. And uh, this is why I've spent so much time educating the public as far as I can about this incredible sugar. It's very, very different from all sugar alcohols and from sugar. It's actually a five carbon molecule, which is completely unique and different from the six carbon molecules of sugar and other sugar alcohols. And this means that it behaves entirely differently from regular sugar. It's the opposite, in fact. It's actually good for teeth. You can eat some xylitol right before you go to sleep and it will improve your mouth health while you're sleeping. It helps to eliminate plaque. It's diabetic safe. And what's more, it has positive digestive results. In your gut, it actually promotes the bacteria that form butyrate. And that is a very good thing because butyrate improves the lining of your digestive system. So xylitol is well known in toothpaste. Perhaps we have studies to show that it's actually even more effective as mints and gum. As I was saying, we know that it's good for diabetics. It's low calorie. It's even somewhat recommended if you're trying to lose weight because it seems to enhance some hormones that make you feel satiated. That means you don't feel as hungry and you feel like more full, you don't want to eat more. So the best time to eat xylitol is right at the end of meals. Now, some people find that it upsets their gastric health, or they, it isn't your health that's upset, it's simply that xylitol is an insoluble fiber and it pulls a little water to itself. So if you eat a lot of xylitol, all of a sudden, you certainly can have loose stools and you can feel that it's upset your digestive tract. Just go a little slower. I suggest that people who have sort of sensitive gastric problems start with one mint, that's half a gram, at the end of three meals a day and try there first. 
It's so good if you can get to the point where you have the adequate amount for oral health, which is six to 10 grams, because this will reduce plaque, promote good bacteria in your mouth, promote good bacteria in your gut, help you have more butyrate, which is good for your, in, actually the absorption of minerals from your gut lining, and your body will enjoy the benefits. Separate from that, they have done studies recently to show that after C-sections and any laparoscopic surgery, that a little xylitol can help get rid of the excess gases and get your body functioning well again, which any mother who's had a C-section knows can be really uncomfortable. Talking about pregnant women, there was a study in Malawi just in 2022 showing that thousands of women in Malawi, where they have the highest rate of preterm birth, actually found that by taking two pieces of xylitol gum, they were able to reduce their risk of preterm birth. Another study in Japan in 2020 was done with because they actually knew that there was a supplement that could reduce cancer risk. And when they analyzed what was in this supplement, they actually found it contained a lot of xylitol. So their next studies were done in vitro, which means in the lab, as well as in vivo, in, in people, to see if xylitol could perhaps have the same effect on cancer suppression. And they are still doing studies and it's showing very positive results. Uh, now, Besides that, the study also confirmed that xylitol seems to sensitize the cancer cells to chemotherapeutic drugs. So I believe, and I've always encouraged people during chemotherapy to keep using xylitol for their mouth health. But now we have some other reasons to believe that it could be really beneficial if you're undergoing chemotherapy, not just to help your mouth, but perhaps to improve the outcome of your treatments. And that, that we will keep an eye on and let you know more as the studies unfold. There are links uh, at the end here to those studies for anyone who's interested. So people with sensitivities are probably bemoaning these things. And I would once again encourage you, go very slowly, small amounts, and just take your time to acclimatize to xylitol. Now, saying all these wonderful things about xylitol, I absolutely have to inter interject here. Xylitol is not for pets, not for dogs. It can release significant amounts of insulin if dogs consume xylitol in a quantity or even a small amount. So don't give xylitol to animals, please. What's the most effective? Mints appear to be just as effective as gum. And sometimes I think in dry mouths, the mints are probably easier to use and maybe better. But that may be because people who use xylitol gum frequently chew it for too long. We really just want two to 10 minutes of chewing at the maximum. What happens is you stimulate a flow of saliva in your mouth. And after that, when you spit out the gum after two to 10 minutes, then don't eat or drink afterwards for an hour. Let that saliva heal your teeth. If you keep chewing and chewing and chewing, you'll diminish the benefits for your oral health. So ensure you're using 100% xylitol gum, if possible, without glycerin. Use it, chew it, enjoy it, then stop. I myself, my family, my kids, my grandkids, we're generational now, uh, xylitol users. And I would encourage anyone who's struggling with gum disease, plaque buildup, or with cavities, there is a solution. You don't have to just accept this and empower yourself. My website, drelly.com, I have an oral health video bootcamp, and I have tried to put as much information in there, and then you can ask questions, and there are other people's questions to read. Anyone who's struggling, I think you'll find a lot of encouragement at drelly.com.